Hello everyone. Uh, today I will present you my term project for uh, EEE 474. Um, my term project is um, explaining the GRAS or FASP sequence. And uh, I want to start uh, by introducing what is GRAS. GRAS is a gradient echo sequence that uses SSFP technique, which stands for steady state free precession. And let's start by what is the state free precession SSFP. This is a timing diagram for usual uh, excitation sequence. Excitation sequence. Uh, here uh, we have TR which is much larger than T2, and after each RF pulse we have an FID signal that dies out because of T2 effects or T2 star effects, and then an echo pulse, echo signal emerges because of the gradient. Uh, and uh, they don't touch each other, therefore we have a um, time interval where the signal is zero, actually. And this is the SSFP timing diagram. In SSFP, we have a TR which is comparable to T2 or much smaller than T2. Therefore, after each RF pulse, uh, our FID signal dies out, but before it dies out, echo signal emerges. Therefore, uh, echo signal, FID, sig FID signal overlaps in the region. And this technique is used for very fast scanning, uh, as you can guess, since TR is uh, much smaller than uh, T2. For, for example, for brain imaging, the usual T2 values are around 60 or 70 milliseconds. Therefore, uh, we can use a TR around 40 or 50 milliseconds, which is uh, very small compared to other techniques. I want to go on with um, the commercial names for the uh, gradient echo pulse sequences. The, here you can see there are two main categories, spoiled gradient echo and steady state free precession. Uh, spoiled gradient echoes are basically uses the same technique or a similar technique as uh, SSFP, but they use it with a spoiler gradient. And in SSFP, we have uh, two other um, subcategories. One is FID-like and the other is echo-like. Uh, the subcategories are so that it is about what we recorded as the imaging signal. In FID-like techniques, we record only the FID signal. In uh, echo-like techniques, uh, we record only the echo signal, and in uh, balanced SSFP, um, we we record both both FID and echo-like signals. And uh, here you can see that uh, there are three different names used by uh, used for GRAS, uh, FASP, and uh, uh, FFP. Uh, the names are differ between different companies. I want to continue with. Um, Comparing the uh, basic gradient echo pulse sequence with grass sequence. In a basic gradient pulse seco uh, echo sequence, we have an RF pulse, and then we have a slice selection uh, in Z direction and a readout in X direction, and a phase encoding gradient in Y direction. Of course, the uh, uh, coordinates can be changed because of the isotropy. In the grass sequence, we have basically three different in the sequence. Uh, first one is the alternating RF pulses here. We first apply alpha degrees, then minus alpha degrees, and continue as alpha, minus alpha, and so on. Uh, and the second difference is we apply uh, extra gradients, one in slice direction, slice selection direction, and other in uh, readout direction. And there, in the readout direction, we apply a constant gradient until the second excitation pulse. And the third difference is we apply a phase encoding gradient, which is in opposite sign uh, to the original phase encoding gradient. And this is called a rewinder gradient, actually. And uh, I want to talk about the effects of these. Um, first, I will start with extra gradient gradients and rewinder gradient. They actually do the same thing. Uh, extra gradients and rewinder gradients are there, therefore uh, to uh, keep the coherence of spins through the imaging. I want to show this picture again. Since uh, we are using TR much smaller than T2, uh, 
we will have we will not have uh, a zero transfer magnetization uh, at the end of each uh, excitation. Therefore, when we apply the new RF pulse and alpha degree excitation, we will have uh, these transfer magnetization uh, contributing to the new um, total magnetization of our object. And using, uh, using this uh, SSFP technique uh, creates an incoherence between these spins. Uh, actually, what, what causes the incoherence is that uh, as we apply different pulses, um, we, we turn this transfer magnetization <coughs> um, and this causes a signal drop. Uh, therefore, by applying a reminder phase encoding and extra gradients, what we do is try to keep these spins incoherent. And uh, for the, um, I want to emphasize that these extra gradients uh, does not work as spoilers. I want to compare them with uh, spoiled gradient echo and uh, the grass sequence. In the spoiled gradient echo, we again have uh, alpha degree and minus alpha degree RF pulses, uh, but uh, at the end of each excitation, we have gradient spoiling, which uh, removes the transfer magnetization uh, and starts with uh, only with the resulting uh, magnetization in the z direction. Uh, however, the extra gradients in grass and fifth seconds does not remove this transfer magnetization, only creates the uh, coherence uh, between the spins. Um, that's how um, uh, grass sequence is different from spread gradient echo or flash sequence. I want to show you some simulation results. Here, uh, I have used a block uh, equation simulation with 30 RF pulses. Uh, here, uh, my T1 is uh, 600 millisecond, T2 is 100 millisecond, and my TR is uh, 50 millisecond. As you can see, my TR is much smaller than T2, and uh, of course T1. Uh, in, the first, uh, in the first picture, um, I have used only alpha degree uh, RF excitation pulse, and uh, there is no uh, gradient effect here. And in the second picture, I have used alternating alpha degree uh, RF pulses. As you can see, when we apply uh, only um, alpha degree RF pulses, and I, I, I want to emphasize that RF pulses are in Y direction, there is one, and th that's why there is no um, excitation or magnetization in Y direction, but only in X and Z direction. In the z direction, we see that the steady state is in uh, uh, the steady state is a very small value compared to the, our initial value, which is one. Uh, in the alternating alpha degrees, uh, in the alternating alpha degrees RF pulses, we have a, a much higher steady state value. This is why we apply alternating alpha degrees in the grass sequence uh, as opposed to using uh, constant constant alpha degree RF pulses. Uh, and uh, this is a very common technique in very fast imaging techniques. And uh, here also the uh, I want to, I should say that the uh, all the RF pulses are um, 60 degrees, 60 or minus 60 degrees. Uh, I want to also show you some experimental results. These are two images taken uh, by me at UNRAM, the National Magnetic Resonance Research Center. Here, the uh, image on left has TR 450 millisecond, TE 10 millisecond, and flip angle 25 degree. And um, it is taken with GRE sequence. It's actually a spoiled GRE sequence. And on the right, we have an image uh, that's taken by True FASP. Uh, I have used True FASP because uh, in Umran, we couldn't have the uh, FASP or grass sequence. Um, therefore, we have used uh, what is the most relevant or um, the closest uh, uh, RF pulse seconds, uh, closest gradient echo seconds to the grass sequence. And uh, on the right, we have TR 400 milliseconds, TE uh, 1.4 milliseconds, and flip angle uh, 15 degree. Uh, here, what I want uh, what I want to show you is that when we keep TR very high, uh, very long actually, um, 
We have uh, a similar result to the spoiled gradient echo sequence. This is because uh, as we keep TR very long, because of the T2 uh, effects, um, our, our um, FID signal dies out before the next uh, RF pulse comes. And therefore, we obtain a very similar result to the spoiled gradient echo sequence. My second result is about the effect of flip angle. Here you see, again, uh, these images are taken at Umra, and here you see two uh, different, uh, two uh, same brain uh, MRI image with uh, taken with uh, TE 1.4 millisecond and uh, TRs are 400 millisecond and uh, 610 millisecond. Uh, but the flip angle for, the, for this image is 15 degree, and flip angle for this image is 70 degree. Here, um, the TRs are different, but uh, as they are very long compared to the T2 values, uh, we, can only, uh, we can see only the effect of flip angles, and uh, as we can see, as we increase the flip angles, we get a much, more, a much sharper contrast difference between tissues, and as we have a smaller flip angle, we get an image which is very small and similar to the uh, spoiled gradient echo pulse sequence. Here. And these images are not taken by me, but uh, they show the uh, grad sequence with uh, having uh, TE 7 milliseconds and uh, flip angle 60 degrees, but this image has uh, TR, TR 40 milliseconds, uh, and this image has TR 400 milliseconds. And as, as we can see, uh, when we keep TR very short, we get a sharper image contrast, and when we keep uh, TR long, we get a um, we get a less uh, image contrast or a proton density weighted image. And this image is quite similar to the uh, our spoiled gradient echo uh, pulse sequence or our grass uh, true phi sequence with very long TR. And that's all I want to present to you. These are my references. Thank you very much for your patience.